Okay, it's there. It's there? Alright. Alright, we're recording. Over here, as you can see far off on those near those rocks, is what's called a huddle of pipla. You can also call them a colony, but when they're swimming, they're actually what's called a raft. But my favorite thing to call them is when they're walking, it's called a waddle. Oh, that's cute. And how do they stay warm? They stay warm thanks to their down, which is a layer of feathers underneath their outer layer of feathers. It'll keep them cool in the nice cold, or keep them warm, I should say, in the cold water and the northern beaches. All right, nice. Can you catch one? Certainly. Oh, hello, little buddy. You like some berries? Oh, that's trying to be nice. Are you okay? Boy, boy. You see, Piplup's adorable, and this makes me forget how much they are very prideful, so they don't like being handed things, which makes it a very difficult Pokemon to train. So for the new trainers out there in the center region, keep that in mind as you pick your status. Yellow. Now nah, this huddle's the best. Right. Yeah. Oh, I got gotcha. you. What was that all about? It was some of my investors. They um, uh, they were just checking up on some stuff. But I did nothing to worry about. Right, now over there is a sleeping Torterra. They love to just hang around and sunbathe. But one of the coolest parts about a Torterra is that they're very paternal. They'll lead Pokemon to the nearest water source and will even let some Pokemon live on its back. The ancients used to believe that underneath the earth was a giant Torterra. <laughs> hey, it's not a good time right now. Yeah, I'm in the middle of doing it. Stay here. Hi. We got it! Now this little ditty right here is a metagross. Now a metagross, what they do is, is that they have four brains and this is a result from the fusing from two metangs. That's why they're they them. What they can do with their four brains is solve immense calculations on a supercomputer level. And what's even crazier is the way they capture prey is by crushing it next to the mouth on its stomach. Here we're at the Kanto Power Plant. Over there you can see by the chain link fence is Jolteon prowling around. Jolteon, when they're not feeling well, they have to come set the power out of the power plants to get some electricity. Don't they produce their own energy? Normally they do, but it's a very small amount. The rest of the electricity is created from static electricity, and there's not a lot of carpets out in the wild. Luckily for this little fella, I have some AA battery. Now right behind me over here is a Magkage. Now Magkage is a Pokemon where its body is made completely of molten magma, reaching an internal temperature of 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or, for you smart people out there, 9,982.222 degrees Celsius. Now the important part about a Magkage if you're training one is you have to keep in mind it's rock hard shell. Because it is just dry and cooled off magma on its back, it is very, very brittle. And if you knock it out, fire can spew off. So whatever you do, don't. Now right behind us is a Whirlipede. Now unlike the other Cocoon and Bog type Pokemon, what happens is when they're storing their energy, they don't normally, they're motionless when they're storing their energy. However, if threatened, it can rule up to 60 miles an hour and empower you with its poison spikes. Right, I don't see any anywhere. Uh, what are we looking for? We are looking for Luxray. Problem is, is that they are asleep most of the time, so we're going to have a hard time finding any. Uh, are they nocturnal? Yeah, from, from it. 
What actually happens is that they have an ability to see through solid objects, but it uses a lot of their power, so they have to sleep it off to gain the energy back. They'll see us long before they are, we see them. Um, I think they found us. <laughs>